chapter 10 is all about area. We're going to do a lot of area calculations, and then we segue from chapter 10 into chapter 11, which is all about volume. Chapter 10 is my second favorite chapter behind chapter 11, which is my favorite chapter. Not that you really care about that. I just thought I'd share with everybody. We're going to start uh, slow. This chapter follows the same procedure. This is probably the longest lesson I'll teach all chapter. Most of the other lessons will take about 10 minutes. It's pretty much showing you where the formulas came from and then letting you go on finding areas. So today we'll start with, as it says, parallelograms and triangles and then uh, we'll just keep adding more shapes as we progress. So tomorrow we'll do some special formulas, and then uh, we'll do quadrilaterals, and regular polygons, and circles, and all kinds of fun stuff like that. Okie doke. Okay, good, love it, excellent, That's a parallelogram. You've seen that before. What's a parallelogram? Well, it's a quadrilateral. That's a good start. It's quadrilateral. With the opposite uh, lines parallel to each other. Close enough sides. Exactly. Segments, yeah, they're not lines. Good. Okay. How do I find the area of that? Do you know? Okay. Well, in order to find the area of that parallelogram, well, I'll just do this. Okay. So first of all, we need some terminology. We got a base. The base is the thing it's sitting on. It doesn't matter which side is the base. So now this happens to be the base. If I turn that parallelogram and I put it on this side, then that's the base. One thing that seems obvious, but I want to make sure that I've said it, is you all know that it, no matter what I do to that parallelogram, the area is going to stay the same, right? Pick it up, move it around, spin it. No matter what I do to it, no matter what side I make the base, the area is going to stay the same. So if I count one side as the base and calculate the area, you'll get the same areas if you use the other side as the base and calculate the area. So there's sitting on the base, but then since it's a parallelogram, that's also a base. Even though it's not sitting on that base, these two things are equivalent. The other thing we need is the height. And that height is measured along the perpendicular. It's the distance between the bases. If you think of the bases as train tracks, it's the distance between the train tracks. You're not going to measure the distance between two parallel lines along a diagonal. It comes back to the whole burst into flames run into the river thing. Who was that, by the way? Will. It was Will, strangely enough. All right. And so if we have the base and the height, then we can just multiply that together and get base times height. The biggest thing that's going to cause problems for many of you in this chapter is I'm going to be very explicit on what I'm expecting to see from work. Work is going to entail starting with a blank formula with nothing plugged into it. So if you're doing a parallelogram problem, you would start with area equals B times H. Also, the case of the letters becomes important. Lowercase b and uppercase b are two entirely different things. These should all be lowercase. Okay, area is uppercase, but the, uh, the b and the h are lowercase. You'll see why in the next chapter. Okay. Take the base, take the height, multiply the two together, you get the area. So find the area of that thing. Actually, how long is the base? 32. Outstanding. Even though it's up here? Yeah. yeah, base is still 32. That distance is 32. What's the height? Uh, 16. How'd you get that? You know that the hypotenuse is 20? Nice. 
beautiful. And it's what? Uh, uh, 16. 16. 3, 4, 5 times 4. Therefore, the area of that parallelogram is 16 times 32, which is what, Ashley? 512. 512 what? Inches squared. Well done. Square inches or inches squared? Oh, I neglected to do the perimeter. I'm sorry. Perimeter would be 32 plus 32 plus 20 plus 20. So 40, 104. Do that right? 104 what? Inches. Inches, right. So the perimeter is equal to 104 inches. Anything difficult about that? Okay. So this height, again, the assumption here is that it's perpendicular, which we pretty much needed to solve that problem. Starting with a blank formula, plugging in what you know, getting an answer, don't forget units. Suppose we want to find the area, and we're going to get to this point where we're going to be finding the area of things which we don't have a formula for. We don't have a formula for finding the area of that thing, elephant without a trunk and a tail, or a mailbox. Do you guys even know what a mailbox is? Yeah. Okay, I don't know if you've ever seen one before. Um, how would I find the area of that thing? There's two methods to use, by the way. What do you want? I'm not making a mistake. Coward. I can't do it. Well, then why'd you say nothing? I can't worry about that. Go oh, here. <laughs> First, find the area of the square in the bottom. Okay. Then, uh, I'm going mean, draw a line on the top. So you make a semicircle. Oh, draw a line here? Yep. Okay. Uh, do you know any of the lengths over there? Like the well, pretend we didn't know the lengths. Uh, if we knew the diameter, you could find the area of the circle, then divide that by two for this semicircle. Beautiful. That would take care of this part. Then you could find the area of the uh, what, remaining square, then subtract by the small one to find the other one and add those. Okay, doing the bottom half of this figure then, there's two ways to do it. There's the addition method or there's the subtraction method. What he's talking about is what's called the subtraction method, if I understood correctly. You're saying do this, mm -hmm. find the area of the whole thing, find the area of that square slash rectangle, subtract the two. Yep. Good. Okay, that's the subtraction method. The addition method means breaking it up into pieces, finding the area of each individual piece, and adding them all up. So notice I can break the legs and the body into the body and the legs, find the area of each individual part and add them up. Okay, and we'll get into that a lot, either using addition or subtraction. And depending on the problem, sometimes one method is easier than the other. Sometimes you can just use whichever one you, were, you want to use, whichever one makes more sense to you. Okay. Any problems there? No, good. Find the area of that thing. Now we start to bring some trig into it. Actually, it's not even trig, it's 45, 45, 90 triangles. Or you could use trig if you want. What piece of information are we missing? <laughs> the height. To find the height somehow. doesn't say what form to give your answer in, so you could give an exact answer or an approximate answer. It's probably easier to do an approximate answer in this case. We'll, we'll bridge that subject in a second. What do you do when you're not given units? What do you use for units? Yeah, units. So our units on the answer to the problem would be? Unit squared. Unit squared, correct.
Emmett, how long is this? Uh, nine root two units. Mm -mm. This. Oh. Uh, nine. Nine. Good. How do I find that? Um, the the height. Mm -hmm. How do I find it? You could, it's too much work. Let's use the 45, 45, 90 triangle. So in the 45, 45, 90 triangle, what's the value of the hypotenuse? 9 root 2. A root 2. A root 2, yes. Which so is equal to 9. Yeah. So we have 9 is equal to A root 2. So therefore, A is equal to? 9. <laughs> root 2. Solve this equation for A. Oh. Nine squared is a two. Solve this equation <laughs> for a. Nine a. Solve this equation <laughs> for a. <laughs> what functions going on here? Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Division. Wait, multiplication. Multiplication. How do you undo multiplication? Division. So let's try this again. What's a equal? Just having a brain fart. <laughs> How do I get rid of the square root of two? Divide it by the square root of two. Good. So if I divide the right side by the square root of two, what do I have to do to Oh, left? so it's nine over root two. There we go. <laughs> I knew you'd get there eventually. Good job. Where's A in the picture? Um the height. It's a parallelogram, so it's base times height. Emmett, how long is the base? Well, how long is the height? 9 over root 2. 108 over the square root of 2. Units squared. Or somebody have a decimal value? 76.37. How is it? Thirty. Yeah, that's what... A little late to the party there, aren't you, Bennett? I understand. Okay. What's the perimeter of that parallelogram? Forty-two. Forty-two. Twelve plus twelve plus nine plus nine. Okay. So a lot of very subtly, are you going to get a problem where I give you the base, I give you the height, and you multiply? I'm assuming you can all multiply, and if you can't, that's why you have a calculator. Almost every one of these area problems is going to involve some extra steps. Either having to do some trig to find a height, having to solve a Pythagorean theorem to find a base, um, keeping in mind the rules for or the properties of parallelograms will allow you to solve all these problems. Okay, so I have to, uh, and we're just drawing dots over here. That was good. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay. Triangles. Let's go back. To this picture. If I draw in the following segment, I split that parallelogram into two triangles. What can you tell me about those two triangles? Why? I, uh, okay, so that's congruent to that. What about these guys? Are those congruent? Yep. Why? Wait, which one are you talking about? Uh, this one and this one. Is it like the theorem, like AE exterior angle something? It is something, 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 yes, but not that something, something, something. Is it alternate interior angle? Yeah, they're alternate interior angles. And you have a bunch of options then. This is also congruent to this. So that gives me all the angles are congruent. That's congruent to itself. This is congruent to this. This is congruent to that. So you pick whichever one you want there. Side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle. About the only one you can't use there is hypotenuse leg. Okay, so that proves that those two triangles are congruent. Therefore, what's the area of the entire parallelogram again? 
Yeah, uh, you're right. That I phrased my question wrong. Formula-wise, what's the area of the entire parallel? Base times height. Base times height. So therefore, what's the area of this triangle? This this triangle. Morgan. Good. One half base times height. Because it's half the area of the parallelogram, the area of the triangle must be one half base times height. The base is the same as it was for the parallelogram, this side here. The height is the same as it was for the parallelogram, which is over here. We could also put it here. We could put it pretty much anywhere we want because it's always that distance between the parallel sides. That's a long-winded way of getting us to the formula for the area of a triangle, which you already knew, which is, what are we doing? Did that, all right, there you go. One half base times height or base times height over two. Either one. I prefer the one half base times height, but you could use base times height over two. You knew that already. And again, notice staying with lowercase b, lowercase h. You have to remember that this distance that we call the height has to be perpendicular to the base. So the way we have it drawn in that picture kind of picked a bizarre choice for the base. However, I could also find it by using this as the base and this as the height. And then my third option would be using this as the base and this as the height. But again, that height has to be perpendicular to the base. And sometimes those heights will be outside the triangle. Think about having an obtuse triangle. If I consider this the base, my height would actually be outside here. Oh, look, another right triangle to solve. Okay, so try that. Ball. So the height is just like an altitude. It is an altitude, yeah. It's exactly the same thing. Uh, it's the gold one you're finding the perimeter and area of. The dash one over on the side is just there for giggles. Before I forget, can you pass those circle things up? I need to record those scores. The one we just graded. Great, you making any progress? Yeah. What'd you start with? I solved the triangle on the left. No, I found H and I solved the triangle on the left with my dagger and theorem. Okay, this guy? Yeah. Uh, so I'm assuming you did 6 squared plus, I don't know, what do you want to call H? Yeah. H squared equals 13 squared. So H turned out to be what? 11.53. Let's leave it in square root form just for giggles. Okay. Now there's a reason why I left it in square root form, which you'll see in a second. And then what'd you do? And now I'm going to do the Pythagorean theorem on the other triangle. Okay, because we need to find this distance to find the perimeter, so we'll call this distance uh, x. So h squared plus 29 squared is equal to x squared. And the reason I left that in square root form is because what's the square root of 133 squared? 133. 29 squared? Thank you. A little help, please. 31.21. Square root? Uh, square root of 974. 974. E. Okay. 
And then, uh, Shafts, you said what, approximately? Okay, so we would leave it in square root form if we need to use it again for another calculation. If we're just going to add it up to find the perimeter, we take the approximate value. So 31.21 plus 29 plus whatever, what would you say, 11 point something or another? 11.53. And hopefully in your calculator, you would actually put it in the square root of seven, uh, 974 plus the square root of 133 plus 29 to get that perimeter. Okay, last step, we need the area, Grace. What do you got? Hold on, let's start with the blank formula. One half base times height. So the base is? Square root of 974. No. 29. 29. What's the height? Um, 11.53 or square root of 133. Beautiful. Which is approximately, multiply all that out. 167. 167.222. Uh, thank you. Centimeter squared. All righty. Any problems there? Hot diggity. Can I erase? Is that what we had for the perimeter? We never did it, did we? Okay, good. So we'll call that correct. All right, new type of problem. I would suggest you draw a picture, create a variable, label your size, set up an equation, solve the equation, and then answer the question. Molly, what do we know? Uh, that the base is x and that the height is x plus 7. Beautiful. Now what? Uh, you put it into area is both base and height and half. So it's 60 equals x times x plus 7. Oh, you smell that? <laughs> Smells like a quadratic. Have a couple options to solve this. The first thing I would do is get rid of the one half because I don't want a one half in my quadratic. So how do I get rid of the one half? Multiply yeah, multiply by two. So a buck twenty is equal to x squared plus seven x. So x squared plus seven x minus one hundred twenty is equal to zero. Does that work out nice? Yeah. It does. Yeah. Good. Because I didn't want to do the or uh, quadratic. The, whatever that thing is called. Yeah, quadratic. How's it factor? Uh, 15, positive 15 and negative 8. So x plus 15, x minus 8. So that means x is equal to negative 15 or 8. Seems like a silly question, but which one doesn't work? Because it's negative? No. No, no. why? Yeah, we get a distance of a negative, and we get a negative distance, which is bad. Okie doke. Uh, well, then we need to answer the question. So the base is eight, what are my units? Inches. inches. So the base is eight inches, and the height is 15 inches. By the way, do you guys know the difference between this and this? 
Yeah, what's the difference? What's this? Feet. That's feet. This is inches. Okay, just in case it shows up on a, a worksheet somewhere. Yes, sir? Uh, why wouldn't you uh, multiply the stuff in the parentheses at the beginning by two? Because you everything's multiplied by two on one side, so it's just, it's not a distributive property. It's just two times. You can't multiply it by everything. Right. When I multiply the two times the one half, it goes away, which is why we did it. I've got to be winding this puppy down. Last one. Now I got a word problem. So when you're done with the calculations, we then need to talk about rounding, depending on how, what you get for an answer there. For some reason, you're building an obtuse triangular sandbox. Again, Aww. who doesn't want an obtuse triangular sandbox? <laughs> Sandboxes as kids. Yeah. Did you have, anybody have the giant plastic turtle sandbox? Yeah, I had that. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah, my kids had that. They <laughs> love that. We just had a pile of sand. That was a sandbox. It wasn't even really a box. It was just sand. I'll be out playing in the sand with my Tonka trucks. Do you have Tonka trucks? You never played with Tonka trucks. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Tonka trucks? Yeah. yeah. I yeah. Is that the yeah, one the that ones. like transforms? No, oh, they're no, the yellow ones. Yeah, yeah. the yellow yeah. one. It's the yellow truck. What's that one show? Where like the guy No, no, no. They were big the they were big trucks that had uh, they were like the ones we had were metal. You guys probably had plastic ones, right? Yeah. yeah, ours were metal so you could get like lock jaw and stuff from the rusted metal. Oh. And then uh that actually the Tonka truck is what caused my friend Rick Rochet to end up in the hospital. He tried to ride a Tonka truck down the driveway and drove and rode it under his dad's pickup truck and hit his forehead on the, the transmission and split his forehead open. Oh yeah. That's awesome. That's the same guy that uh, that froze his lip to the flagpole thing. Ever played that one? Yeah. No. No. Yeah. Yeah, you did. Yeah, I did. No. Where he tore part of his lip off? Yeah. Bled all over the flag? Yeah. Uh. He's also the same guy that got thrown up on in class. Oh. <laughs> Rick had a rough childhood. Yep, what do you got for me, buddy? You making progress? Yeah. How many boards? Twelve. Why? Hold on. Does everybody agree? Twelve boards? Yeah. Why? Well, you need it like eleven point eight to be exact, but you can't just like cut that board to twelve. And then what? Yeah. Okay, but explain to me why it's eleven point blah blah blah. Where'd that come from? for one second. How else could you do that same calculation? Just find the perimeter and divide by three. Find the perimeter divide by three. You get the same results. So uh, 28, 35.5 divided by three. You get 11 point what? Uh, eight three. Okay, so we have to round up to 12. Are we all in agreement? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. How much sand do we need that? Four bags. Why? Because the area of that triangle is 36. See, right? Uh, let's see. 
area is equal to base times height. How long is the base? That 12. 12. What's the height? Six. Good. Not 7.5. 6 times 12 is, I never learned my 12's table. Divided by 2? Yeah. Why? Oh, good job. Yeah. Sometimes I have trouble with that. Okay. 36? Yeah. We get exactly 4. So in a problem like this where you end up, if you end up shy, you have to round up. And there's, so the mathematical, traditional mathematical rounding goes out the window. If you end up at 12.1, you can't round down to 12, you won't be able to complete the sandbox. Okay. Any problems? Hot diggity. we got to be close. Yep, we're all done. So day one. Uh, there's a new chapter in school, or sorry, a new folder in Schoology for chapter 10. There's a new assignment sheet in chapter 10. And uh, there's, I believe I unlocked it, but I'll check in a second. I did not? Okay, so uh, day one in chapter 10.